Have a look around, we're not in any sort of rough yeah. We're just going to try and take an awful lot of growth off this tree because it's, it's, mm. it hasn't been pruned for a long, long while. So um, we're going to make it a lot easier to sort of get into the tree to pick apples. We're going to make sure there's no dead, dying, or damaged wood in there, no crossing wood, anything mm. growing back into the trees. Um, so, yeah, by the end of it, it will look quite bare, but that's just the nature of it. By spring, summertime, a lot of the branches will have come back again, but in the places we want them to be. That's this year's growth. You see it's darker uh, in colour, and you see that yeah, colour there. Yeah, okay. uh -huh. And you can tell what sort of uh, weather we've had by it. We've not had a very good year this year for, for growth, really. So it's only that sometimes. Just because the weather's been so changeable, mm -hmm. it's you know it's been quite it wet. Well, it's been quite dry early on, wasn't it? If you remember, we didn't have, mm -hmm. we haven't had much rain at all. Mm -hmm. And obviously, water's one of the main things that trees need to grow. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you have a really really cold winter as well, you can get really short growth. If you have like a nice warm, sort of wet mm -hmm. summer and winter, sometimes you can get like six seven foot of growth. Mm -hmm. okay. It's hard to tell on these. These are called water shoots, the ones that go vertical. And they, they could, it's hard to tell, but they could be two or three years old. So obviously it's meant to be pruned once a year, uh, twice a year, so I say you do okay. summer for fruit. So, you, so in the summer you take bits off to prepare for your fruit coming. And in the winter, it's winter for wood. So you, you take the wood away and you uh, create a sort of open tree so you can get in. I mean, at the moment, this, this probably fruits really well. You probably get a lot of fruit, but if you've got apples, Right at the top yeah. of the tree there, you've got very little chance of being able to get to them. What they do, they just stay on the tree and they mummify and it can cause disease and all sorts of things. There's a lot of airborne diseases, so as soon as they start blowing around in the wind and you've got an open wound like that, it's very likely to, to come up against mm -hmm. some diseases. If you're cutting things off, you cut them flush with the... Uh, well, there's a collar there, you can see that's called a collar. So you cut them flush just above the collar and that heals it over and then it just folds itself in almost. It's very difficult to kill an apple tree. Don't, don't panic about it, you know, don't cut anything off and go, oh no, I can't believe mm -hmm. I've done that. It's not, it's not going to affect it too much. Uh, as long as we don't start cutting into sort of the main structure of the, the tree. Uh, so yeah, it's very difficult to kill an apple tree um, by pruning it too hard. So today we'll probably start the renovation pruning. It's really, it's quite difficult. On a tree that's been nicely pruned from year to year, you can, it's quite easy to to see what you want to do with it but whereas this one's a little bit you can see like sort of massive tangled branches in there so um, so yeah it's it's quite difficult to see what to do and we don't want to take too much off off the main structure you then got your, your lateral branches that come off which are the smaller sort of branches that, that hold the uh, the new shoots uh, then off that you've got your spurs and you've got your water shoots which are your newer growth and these normally grow straight up vertical, which isn't ideal, again, because it's hard to get to the apples. They will produce apples, but what we're looking for really are horizontal branches. Uh, they're easy to get to, the fruit buds uh, develop a lot better, uh, and, and they generally get uh, nicer fruit from it. Anything over about five years old, really, we're looking, if we can, if it's, if it is to get rid of it and actually train another branch into where it's been. Uh, because once a tree starts to get over, once a branch starts to get over sort of four or five years old, the, the fruit tends to go downhill a little bit. It doesn't produce so many fruit buds. You can see there's, there's quite a lot of area there with no buds on it, for instance. We start at the tip of the branch, and this is called your leader. So this determines uh, which way the branch is going to grow. If you've got this, so this branch is going to carry on growing up this way. Uh, which is quite good really, it's growing away from the tree, it's not growing into any other branches, it's not crossing over. So what we'd normally do is take the, uh, the leader down to sort of a third of its growth, so and to, a, to an outward facing bud, which they're all outward facing on this one. So I'd look at maybe a bud there on top. It's often good to take a, brand, a bud underneath because that will grow out this way, whereas the one on top will just keep growing higher and higher. So we're looking to take it out to a, a, a bud that's underneath. That's a, that's a leaf bud there, just to let you know, the leaf buds are the ones that grow very close to the stem. Fruit buds mm -hmm. jut out like that. So that's your fruit, that's going to turn into, that's going to flower, then turn into an apple. That's going to be a leaf. So you won't find many fruiting buds on, on the newer growth. 
So looking at that, you can take it down to a third to a half. So I'd probably take it to the one underneath because you can see that that is going to continue to grow out that way. So that one on top there will go upwards. You don't really want that. So I'd take it out to there. So it's really important when you, when you stop pruning one tree to just clean the bush, uh, clean your secateurs down as you will. If one tree's got a disease, then you will pass it right round to the whole orchard and then you're in trouble. Can we use some sort of like vinegar to clean it or it's not so Yeah, good? vinegar's not great mm -hmm. because it's got a sort of acetic acid in there. Yeah. That, can, that can affect yeah. trees. So we're actually using mm -hmm. white, white spirits, spirits yeah. yeah, which is, even though it smells reasonably strange, it's, it's reasonably sort of natural thing to use. So mm -hmm. my secateurs, I was using these over the weekend, so I haven't had a chance to clean them. It's always good to yeah. clean your secateurs with something like WD-40 or three-in-one oil. Just make sure they're really, really clean. Mm -hmm. I do that if I can every couple of weeks or so, but I haven't had a chance this weekend. So mm -hmm. just use a toothbrush, just clean mm -hmm. the blade as much as you can. And then this bit's called the anvil. So you just rub it up the anvil like that. And that'll get rid of any sort of diseases. It's quite easy to forget what branch you're working on. And then it just gets really confusing. So you go to the leader, which is this one, which is the, the furthest most tip of the branch. So if you follow the branch down from there, this is the furthest most tip of it. And that's, that's your leader. So as I said, we're looking for ideally um, a leaf bud from underneath, because that, that will then create a branch out this way. So, and when you cut as well, it's a cut, a clean cut, at a slope away from the bud, like that. So that's quite clean. So what will happen there is, if you, if you cut it the other way, the water runs and it gets stuck often in there between the, between the branch and the bud and it just rots the bud away. So with this, that will just slope it, because it's sloping, the water will run off there and it will just drip away from the bud. So it's quite important to make sure that you, you, you cut in the right way. So. We'll move down, we'll move down here. And what, we, what we're really looking for, first as well, first and foremost, is the 3Ds, which is dead, diseased, or damaged wood. Uh, if there's any disease on there, and it's sometimes dif difficult to tell whether it's diseased or not. If you, if, you need, you know, if you see something and think that doesn't quite look right, just give me a shout and I'll come and have a look. You've got things like woolly aphid and canker and things that can, that can uh, affect apple trees. Sometimes you just got to stop talking and start cutting. Simple as that. So I'm going to take that branch off to here. It's going to create a bit of a gap. Uh, when you do it, when it's quite a heavy branch like this, if you just go and start sawing at the top there, what's going to happen is as, as it starts to bend downwards with the, with the weight, it's just going to start ripping. It's going to start ripping bark off. So it's a good idea to, to take these off bit by bit. So you cut underneath like this, it's called an undercut. So you cut underneath like that, it's, as it starts to bend, it's going to stop the bark ripping up the branch. It doesn't matter so much down this part because this branch is coming off anyway. And then you take and you start cutting from the top there. And now this is crossing and rubbing. What happened eventually as the wind blows, it's just going to keep rubbing like that and it'll create wounds on either one of these branches. And again, <coughs> that's where your disease gets in. So we need to decide which one of these we're going to cut off to sort of open it out. Now, this is, a, this is quite a nice branch because it's not too old. Again, it's horizontal. It's grown into a place where there's a bit of, you know, bare sky. So we'd take this one off straight away. So we take that one right down because we don't want it to grow back again because it just grows straight back into the tree. So we take that, that's a flush cut, not a dutch cut. So that won't produce any more growth from there now. So as you get further into the tree, you'll see that, you'll see this whippy sort of growth now normally this would, if the tree had been uh, had been pruned last year this would just be one year old but it's not it's one I think that's probably three or four years old looking at that so what we want to do with most of these they're not going to they're not going to produce really good quality fruit buds they're going right up in the air we don't really want them so we're actually going to cut a lot of those off yeah it'll get all sorts in there all sorts of pests and diseases yeah, you can do to fix that. Well, yeah, ideally we need to cut it sort of at an angle there. You can see the collar under there, you see that kind of raised bit. So cut it just above the collar. You can see on this side, that's a good example actually of how to cut branches off. You can see that they've cut it down to the collar there, which would be sort of that 
that area on this branch mm -hmm. and then it's just folded in on itself and although it's died off it's actually almost created a seal to stop anything getting mm -hmm. in any pesticides so that's quite that's a good cut actually this is awful a dutch cut is where you leave uh, a heel on the tree so uh, i'm not going to take this branch out but just as an example if you wanted to remove that branch there and you didn't want it to grow back again you'd cut it flush with the with the actual branch if you wanted it to you wanted to give it a chance to bud break again underneath you cut it so on there you cut it at an angle so across there leaving leaving a couple of centimeters at the bottom so flush at the top and then a couple of centimeters at the bottom and that encourages the bud the buds to break from there and that creates new outward growth. I forget about and my body parts actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it's cuts on the pull. Yeah, I just aim to pick, pull out some little oh. snippets of him yeah. saying stuff that, that makes sense. A lot more it. complicated than I thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dutch cuts, know. flat it's... cuts. We should go further down. I'm not sure because... <laughs> It's a leaf. <laughs> um, that's super clear. That, that's kind of theoretically what we're looking for. Yeah. Which looks, kind of looks horrible, but... Yeah, it does look... Would you take this? Yes, I'll take, I'll take it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Close to the yep. joint and a straight and angle. I'd take that whole thing off. All this? I'd take yeah. it off to there. Oh, really? It's all, it's That's all what you were looking for, eh? Like... Oh, no, you can cook it from above now. It's just... Yeah, yeah, I understand, but it's actually it's easier. Oh, it's easier, yeah, doing it from there, then, yeah. Yeah, whichever is easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, yeah, I've never tried it. Oh, maybe it's a little bit. Wow. Yeah. I can do it a few times. Yeah. It's still feel really clueless. <laughs> it's like you've got some bread on you. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you would have seen it and it was just a dead tree. <laughs> 